All right, Derek Brennan, everybody. get started what's up man how are you i'm good, good. looking good you? man thanks man you yeah too. my name is derek brennan um i'm from cleveland ohio i originally uh, am from sandusky ohio where it, there's cedar point many caricature artists in the world know cedar point um it's basically where i started um doing caricatures uh but now i yeah live in cleveland with my wife and uh, i work as like a full-time artists doing freelance work, um, murals, children's books, um, and then just like pet portraits. And then I'll do like my own personal work too, um, where I'll have some gallery shows in there. So I do a little bit of everything, but yeah, um, went to college for fine art, um, studied in caustic painting, which is something we'll probably talk about. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, is the mural is fairly new, right? Like you started doing that like two or three years ago? Yeah, I think it's probably close, close to four years ago now, um, that I started doing them. Um, it, it was, didn't have really any intention on doing murals until the opportunity came up. And then from there, it was just like, I was like, oh, this is kind of, kind of cool to see your work at that kind of scale. Yeah. And, and something about it becoming like part of like a city or something, you know, it's like a it becomes like a landmark or something that people pass by every day. Um, and there's something about that was kind of it seemed very approachable for people to, you know, to, to see my, my art that way instead mm -hmm. of like in a gallery. Um, I mean, there's there's pros and cons to both, but I, I just found it very interesting how people would react to it as they drove by. Um, especially in certain cities where maybe they didn't have a lot of art. Some parts of the city are kind of run down or something. And then, you know, something pops up like that. And, you know, it's a little, just little things like that was kind of I started noticing that I enjoyed. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I heard a statement recently that beauty is a human right. And so, yeah, that's, Living in Prague, like I, I get, I'm really spoiled with that, but um, there's a lot of American cities that are just like so bland, you know? So like the mural, there's there's something about like coming up on a cool mural that's, there's like some hope there. I don't know how yeah. to describe it. You see well, it. Well, yeah, like a lot of people, you just turn the corner and be like, you're like shocked by something like that, you know? So I thought, you know, people just not knowing they're going to come up on it, you know? I felt like that was pretty neat you know yeah. that it could be just around the corner and then not know and but yeah it's been cool i really enjoy doing them it's definitely a learning curve i had to uh you know i had some contacts from college that you know some artists that have done murals in the past so i had to definitely get some do some research there um but once i got going i mean i started learning as i go everyone got a little bit better you know basically mm. like doing anything like caricatures or or painting it was just uh learning you know taking doing your full, full drawing i did it like on my ipad so i did i digitally draw everything and then i'd project it onto the wall so at night i'd come in with like sometimes there the, the buildings were like you know 20 feet tall 40 50 feet wide so i'm using like a scissor lift and mm -hmm. And then also having a projector projecting, trying to just sketch it out on the wall first, because that's that's the main thing. The hurdle was when I felt like once I could get the sketch up on the wall, I'm like, OK, I can start blocking in. You know, it's just taking from something so small, because if, if I were to try to like eyeball it that large, there's no way the proportions are going to get close. I yeah, just knew, I just knew it wasn't going to happen. So I saw people, you know, either doing the grid method or doing 
uh, projection, and I kind of just lean towards that. And uh, yeah, it it and, and sometimes you have to project in portions, so mm. you have to line, you have to cut your drawing up into like quarters and line up your lines and stuff. It, it was starting to get complicated, and then you know, huh. I'm I'm trying to sketch this on the wall from you know seven at night to one in the morning. Just it's, you know, it's it's it was. My dad's helping me and stuff with it, you know, oh, trying cool. to operating things. And I'm just telling him, move it slightly over. You know, he's just like trying to move it just a little bit just to make the lines match up. It, was just, it can be a mess doing them that big. But oh yeah, are, it works you, out. Are, you, are you using like a big high powered projector or? Honestly, no. I mean, I couldn't afford that starting out. I, pro I probably now I'm, I'm looking into getting something uh, better. I think the one I paid for was like it was like 300 bucks or something. Um, something I mean, ideally I'd like something more higher resolution to work with on the wall. Uh, but for what I was using it for, just to get I, plan out the line work, um, I could see the line work up on the wall enough where I can after that after the next day I go approach the wall I can just start blocking in on my stuff easy. So. Didn't need it necessarily, but now I kind of would like to. So when you approach someone to do a mural, are you like taking a picture of that wall on your iPad, for example, and like doing the painting on the wall so they get like a real life idea of what it looks like? Yeah, pretty much. Um, well, and, and a lot of times I'm not like approaching people for it. It's like sometimes there's open calls um, or someone's contacting me about a mural. Um, I would, there has been a couple times where I pitched some ideas. I'd see a wall and I'm like, Ooh, that'd be a perfect wall for this idea. Um, but that doesn't happen very often. You know, there's like open calls here in Cleveland where, you know, there's a mural project on this wall and you kind of send your information, um, and maybe kind of what your idea is for the wall. Rarely they ask you to do like a full drawing, but that's been a, a thing before. But usually there's some sort of stipend or um, you, you first send your qualifications and then if you're selected, you and three other artists will come up with a design. You'll be paid to do that design and then they'll choose from that those pool of three to do the final mural. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of something that happens with that. Um, but yeah, a lot of times I'll I'll do the drawing and then place it into the image so that they can get a clearer idea of what that what that all looks like. Mm -hmm. And is it just your dad helping you, or do you have a team? Or um, I don't have a team. Typically, it's my dad, um, and it, he'll come in and, and he'll block in a lot of things and help me with like uh, projector projection stuff. Um, but yeah, he's actually, he's an artist too. So it's kind of cool that we get to work on some projects together. Um, and actually he, well, quite a quite a while ago now, he started doing caricatures when I started doing them. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. That's well, cool. Just like low key doing them, you know? And then uh, I was maybe, maybe that was my third year or something. And so I come back with him. We, when I learned stuff, I'd show it to him and we'd kind of, you know, he'd, he'd do some things and, it was fun. He he hasn't done it in a while, but he's still very artistic. He does, you know, a lot of it's like more uh, wood carving and wood work, you know, but he, uh -huh. he does do art, like painting and drawing and stuff too. But yeah, so well, that actually, fun. Fun. that kind of brings me to like what I wanted to, one of the things I want to start with uh, is just kind of your introduction to art or like maybe if there was a, a, a time that you sort of felt called to it. I mean, your dad is an artist, so that, that yeah. probably had a lot to do with it, but what, what happened? Was there a moment or was it like something that happened over time or? I mean, honestly, I just, in my childhood, I just remember just drawing constantly, you know, um, not coloring books or anything like that, just drawing. I just, so, my dad actually worked at a like a printmaking company and he was able to get tons of paper just stacks and stacks of paper i just remember just like all different colored paper and just like all these different options so i just had always had plenty of paper to work with whatever i wanted 
and then in Sandusky, I think there was a, a Crayola factory, which his like one of his best friends worked for. So I'd get like cases of those huge Crayola packs with like every color imaginable. Wow. So, with that and then markers, they just fueled me. They just like, here, go draw. And so I just have, I mean, they still have it all. I know they have all of everything I ever drew, drawn. Um, but yeah, they just fueled it, I think, as a kid. And I just was obsessed with drawing people and little weird characters and stuff. But, but also, I thought it was cool. I, and I found later that I had these caricature books when I was a kid. Like they were literally, my dad found them on eBay or something and they were like cartooning books, caricature books. And I, I, I can't for the life of me remember which ones they were, but I remember it being like an all black and white on the front with a bunch of little uh, caricature heads, red writing, but um, you might have it. Hold on just one second. I'm sure you have it. Is it that one? The one. Really? Yeah, it's the one. <laughs> It's Lynn yeah. Redman. So I had that like fourth, fifth grade. I had I had that that book um, at, at least. I probably had it before then. So I, I always had this kind of interest in caricature at like such a crazy early age. Um, and then in 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 high school, that's basically when I saw the opportunity. Well, someone approached me. Uh, a friend from my art class was like, I work at Commons Art Shop, to your point. You should uh, try out for their, you know, their character program. And that's basically how I, I got into it. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I was, uh, my parents were very, very supportive about me being an artist, which is maybe for many people, they didn't have that. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, pretty early age, they've been, you know, thinking that I mean I think they saw it um and they're yeah they, they helped me do it so it did cool. you um ever have those books they're like how to draw 50 monsters or something yeah. like that or yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that's I cool I, I love those ones too but I never did the steps <laughs> I never did yeah. the steps you just I went just straight tried to, I tried to draw the, the final outcome but I never did the draw the circle and then I never listen to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like never reading the instructions either. Right, exactly. So that's that's pretty cool. Like that that seems like that would kind of that experience with all of the different colors of paper and like the endless kind of art supplies would uh, almost sort of train you to be really like overwhelmed when you go into an art supply store. Like for me, I walk around it's like Dude, it's so hard for me to just get the one thing that I need, you know? Yeah. Well, I it's my favorite place to go in the world is go to the art supply store, a good one. Like Ohio, right? We don't we honestly don't have that many great art supply stores. There's like Michaels, which is like mostly selling like wreaths and <laughs> like bunny rabbits and such stuff. a weird and place. And then there's an art section. I mean, and they can do a decent job but i you know when i went out to like california and i saw the art supply stores i forget honestly we i think you and i we yeah really yeah one there and i was blown away with just like every wood panel you ever want any canvas just random sizes headed whole encaustic painting wax painting which section. is rare i know and i was just like i was just this is my dream right here. I could have spent like five hours in there just like looking at every little thing. See? They have one in San Francisco that's even bigger than that. It's, I oh. forget, I think it's like. Um, the Artists and Craftsmen? Is that it? No, it's a, it's a brand that you would know, like an art supply store that you would know, but it's just kind of like the flagship store. It's like a Walmart oh. with art supplies. Like oh, it's, really? it's, it's it feels. Blink? Yeah, I think it was Blick. Yeah, but it was like the biggest blick I've ever had yeah. ever seen every kind of art you can imagine. They had an entire. Yeah. Kind of There's story. one like that in Chicago too, of a blick, just like a warehouse. So nice. It's, yeah. It's candy, and it's, candy land, it's yeah. funny because those stores are like, cause there's one in Vienna too called Bosner and like people 
like all artists know it. It's like anywhere you go in Europe, they're like, yeah, have you been to Vienna? Like that Bosner store? Really? <laughs> it's like shit, man. <laughs> it's like a famous stadium or something. Yeah, right. I know. So uh, what about your experience? So you, you, after, like when you were in high school, you were doing caricatures and then you decided to go to college for art? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's basically... Uh, and it, it was while I was doing caricatures, too. So in the summers, I was doing caricatures, and then I was uh, going to school during the rest of the year. But, um, yeah, so my first year into college, I was just taking, I was at almost, it was like a branch campus in Sandusky. So I was staying at home the first year out of college, and then at this branch campus, basically taking, like, my introductionary art courses uh, our history, um, just kind of preparing myself. And honestly, we didn't really know, like, should I be going to college? Does that make sense for me to go to art college? Um, and my parents didn't, they didn't go to college, so they, they didn't know if I should go either, you know what I mean? So, and not a lot of people in my family actually went to college. So it was actually my, well, my, my wife, my wife right now, at the time, my girlfriend, uh, her mom went to college and um, she helped us with a lot of that kind of stuff of just understanding all of it and all the how the loan process and all that. Yeah. And, and we all we both went to to college together basically in what's called Bowling Green, uh, Ohio, which is like an hour away from Sandusky. But um, yeah, they have an, they have a, a really great fine arts program there, and that's where I went. Um, and got my bachelor's degree. Um, and then all through that, you know, I'm still focusing on caricature really hard. Like I was more so, I was bringing in caricature a lot into my art class projects. Like it was like we'd do a painting and then it would be kind of like, it would be caricatured painting, but I'd, I'd be still like trying to push it um, in different ways. You know, at that time I was really like, into like Nate Kavnicki's work and Eric Goodwin's and I was really interested in the exaggeration early on like and then it just started it, it goes back and forth a lot you know where I, I felt like my inspiration and where I thought I'd want to be versus where I ended up going it's just interesting how like you go through ups and downs or I don't even know if they're ups and downs but left to right like kind of feeling like you want to be moving towards the more exaggerated or you're trying to be more realistic it seemed to, to move that back and forth quite a bit and then there's artists that you see that do that like uh like jeff Stahl, like very exaggerated but there's still like a lot of like painterly rendering and stuff mm -hmm. too you know or um uh anthony Jeff jeffroy joffrey Joffrey, okay. I think that's uh, how you pronounce it. Well, uh, yeah, his, his work too, which was like, his work is like, so it's like cartoony, but also rendered like incredibly. It's so weird. If you were to like take his stuff and just like flatten it, it could easily be like a cartoon as well. It's it's so interesting how he makes it work both ways. Where uh -huh. like, you know, Jason Seiler's work is it's more painterly and, and uh, realistic, exaggerated too, but a little more on the realistic side. Yeah. But yeah. So I, you know, I went through a lot of that kind of back and forth in college um, with caricature. And then towards the end of college, I was getting further and further away from it um, in my personal work. Um, that actually kind of brings me to the question of your style, which is like, aside from the encaustic, which kind of puts pretty, I would say, like strict guidelines on guidelines, kind of like uh, restrictions on style because of just the, the nature of the medium. Do you feel like you've kind of discovered your style or found your voice? I mean, your, your encaustic work is like clearly yours. Um, but again, that's that's probably in big part because um, you're not you, you're like the only caricature artist in the society <laughs> that does encaustic. Um, but what about uh, 
what about that? I mean, do you feel like you found it or do you feel like it still has work to go or? Oh, I, I definitely feel like it's because as an artist too, I, I have, I struggle like thinking like, well, my, my digital work looks different from my acrylic painting looks different from my caustic painting. Like sometimes if you were to look at some of my work, you would be like, oh, those are, that's like, a, those are different artists sometimes. And, but honestly, I kind of like that about myself where there's certain parts of me that love to just like do caricature for what it is with the line work. And that's a part of me. And then when I do like something digital, maybe it's a little more tight or if I'm doing acrylic painting, it can be tight, um, more rendered. But then I take a break from that. I'm like, okay, it's been, I've been doing that for like a week. I need to get back to, to working on something loose. And, and then that's when I play with my encaustic work. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting because I know a lot of people feel like their style being one thing. but And I still think like if you look at certain pieces of mine, you still would think that they're mine. But um, encaustic is for sure like probably where I feel most at like home, um, where it's this back and forth of almost abstraction and, and this painterly trying to create likeness um, and then trying to scrape off things. It's very hands-on. Um, I just love the the back and forth of it, of, of adding paint and then subtracting it with like a scraping tool. I really, I get the draw, I get the paint, I get the almost do sculpture basically with it so it, it kind of has everything that i like um all combined in one thing mm-hmm. and that's and that that's something i learned in school what was about encaustic so um and that's kind of where i started experimenting with it and uh, yeah this one right here that i'm working on and is a little encaustic pup kind of in the process of this guy right now yeah that looks good man thanks but yeah, I mean, I'm trying to keep it loose, trying to figure out like where the line is, like how, how much information do I need to give? How much do I, can I leave, let go? You know, that's kind of the fun, the fun part about it is like what, and that's where caricature comes in with this. It's like, um, where do you emphasize and where do you de-emphasize? And that's mm-hmm. the same thing that you're doing in caricature. And just, I'm just doing it a little bit differently here still the same kind of tools but Mm. yeah Hmm. so with encaustic is like what is the temperature like what's the max temperature you can have that at before it starts to melt oh like the melting point on the the, like the canvas yeah like if if it's sitting in the sun is it gonna melt yeah it'll melt (laughs) (laughs) straight up um I honestly don't know like exactly what the melting point is right now. Um, but I know if you leave it in your car for an hour or two, it's probably going to start melting. How yeah. many times have you uh, had customers? One. Just once? One. Well, only not bad. one. I have like uh, basically a disclaimer now with like with any of my shipments that like how to properly take care of an encaustic painting. And I, and and sorry for like I haven't explained encaustic completely because uh, for for those don't, that don't know encaustic is is wax painting it's like beeswax and Damar resin uh, heated up melted and then uh, using it with oil paint while it's hot you mix it together and um, use that to paint um, so that's what encaustic is too so. Well, let's get, we'll get more into that in a second, but I did want to ask you um, about making your art career sustainable. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, I think, with the caricature thing, but you know, you have a few different hustles going on, so I'm interested in how you sort of developed that and um, really like the nuts and bolts of how you made that like a sustainable thing. Yeah. Um, well, initially after college, I was like, okay, I don't really know what I'm doing. I, I kind of thought I was going to do more caricature stuff 
So I had like a little business where I did some fairs with my own tent and my own signage, really small county fairs. But there were there were always like other caricature artists there that have been there longer, and I didn't have really great booth spaces. So I was kind of like, mm, I don't know. So I, I was doing that. I lived in Cleveland. My wife got a job, and then uh, I was looking around, still keeping an eye open for like some sort of art related job. And then I found uh, there was like a T-shirt company that they needed uh, artists for. So I, I was an artist for a t-shirt company for like one year. Um, and, that, and that was fine. It, it wasn't the best, but it's mostly like I was making t-shirts of like cats destroying cities and stuff like that. It was like, it was like you know, whatever. You still got some of those t-shirts? I, I have a couple. I, 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 <laughs> but they're like the, they're like the all over print shirts, you know? Oh, that like yeah. Front and back, not like a something like that i would wear like something like that but they did it all over print stuff but anyway i got the the call basically from another artist that i did some work for in bowling green and she was like i have this mural opportunity for you i was like okay let me hear about it and saw how much it paid too and i was like oh man i was like i could this could be like a good jumping off point for me to go off for, on my own and so I, I quit, started doing that. And then from there, I was like, it was, it was a mix of murals. Uh, I worked with um, my buddy, Rob Wren, uh, in your face. He had me do some caricatures. You know, I, I was doing like Ohio State Fair, Canfield Fair, you know, maybe two other ones. So Is I, that I, still I, the name of his company? In your face. Son studio. of a bitch. I was thinking about using that name. I knew someone would have that. Yeah, in your face. Studio, so <laughs> it's a good one. Out. It's a good name. Yeah. I, I like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I worked with him some parts, and then I was trying to figure out of other ways of. So I started marketing myself and spending time in the studio. Um, so I contacted, I got to talk to some galleries, and I had an art show sold a couple pieces. A lot of it's just like trying to get some things moving. Like what I was doing in college where I was painting every day, I hadn't been doing that for like a year. So it's like constantly looking for opportunities. Like I'd spend a day sometimes just looking for Ohio opportunities around the area, sometimes not even in Ohio, or just call for entry where I'm trying to get my artwork out there in public um, or into different shows, or looking for a mural opportunity, or whatever. I was just basically looking, trying to keep it going. And eventually, once I get some murals, I have like, oh, I have a portfolio of like three murals now. So I, I can use that as like, this is what I've done before. I could do this for you and as a selling point. Mm -hmm. So, and then every time, those murals led to other murals because people would see them, see my name, and they contact me for something else. It could be a mural, it could be a pet portrait. Basically, the way I got to do, so I'm, I'm right now, I'm on like book four of a children's book series. So nice. it's people that got, well, they contacted me to do the children's books, saw my mural in Lakewood. So they wow. saw it. And they were like, oh, that's cool. I had it's like a little... free billboard for your work. Exactly. And that's that's the thing. is like once you start, you start getting a little bit of reputation or and then there'll be like a, a news article or a, a paper. There's just – and then you can post something on Instagram. Someone will tag you in something. It's just like if you keep on putting yourself out there more, you'll just – they'll start doing things for you. So like my murals are working out there for me yeah. even when I'm – making them you know wow that's cool i never thought of it like that yeah so and, and that's that goes for like doing these pet portraits because that's lately like this past year even during all the quarantine stuff like has been really good and i'm not even like super trying to like i'm not doing any ads i'm not doing anything like that on facebook i'm just like i post some dog portraits that i've done like just as like my my Instagram feed, 
and people see them or you put the hashtags in and then people see them you get friends their friends that got them done i give them business cards to hand out to their friends that have dogs and then they'll contact me it's just like it's nice that when you do a piece it can still create you another job you know that's yeah. basically the system that i've been kind of i mean it's all over the place just <laughs> with like different types of art but um i'm making art <laughs> but, yeah yeah so i mean there's definitely days where i'm not like feeling it or you know i don't want to maybe the photos aren't great for this dog or something i'm like i don't want to do this one but luckily luckily actually people have such good phones nowadays that they yeah have pretty good jobs taking pictures of their dogs so um pr- probably like 10 years ago it's been a lot a lot harder to do this but yeah so you would have a field day on charles bridge the bridge i'm working on now because man people bring every imaginable breed of dog you can really? i mean yeah and there there's this czechoslovak wolf which is like part wolf part dog and it's this huge like coyote looking massive like timber wolf kind of dog and then we we have like all of these different breeds it's so cool to sit there and just watch the different dogs go by so yeah, you, you'd have fun up there. That's awesome. Yeah. So um, let's talk a little bit about like the a little bit more about the nuts and bolts, or maybe just kind of like organization, because a lot of artists have a hard time staying organized, whether it's you know attention deficit or if it's like something else. But um, for my personal thing is like I get so uh, excited by different projects or new, uh, things that I can learn artistically or, you know, building something or carving something. I get really distracted with all that stuff. Um, other people just have a hard time with spreadsheets or whatever. So how, how is your temperament toward that stuff? Or does your wife do all that or what? Uh, (laughs) that's funny you say that. Um, she crafts most of my emails for me. But <laughs> she corrects, you said? Yeah, well, yeah, basically, uh, yeah, she, she helps with a lot of that stuff. I'm, I'm just like, she's very eloquent and able to, to get her point across with like emails. And uh, I've always, always struggle with that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I have spreadsheets, you know, uh, for, 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 you know, what my to do list is of like keeping like track of what's next for like the pet portraits. But man, yeah, it it is hard keeping it all organized. Like, I'm like, should I work on this portrait? How far behind am I? Like, am I like, I usually tell people like one to two months and I'll get it to them. And sometimes I'm getting close to that two month mark. I'm like, oh man, I have all this other stuff to do. But sometimes projects just come out of nowhere and they need your attention like right now. So you have to kind of like, whoop. Okay, put that priority. See if I can nudge that down a little bit. It, it's it is kind of stressful. It definitely uh, is hard. I, I have like a little notebook where I just sometimes write down, just physically write writing down. My wife tells me to do this. What you need to do, even for like the week, um, that will help you organize your thoughts a bit. What you need to worry about and prioritize like today or this week, like this week. I'm like, okay, I have to to work on, I'm doing like an ad campaign for a hospital. I'm doing like all the artwork for the background for, um, background for billboards and stuff like that. So I'm doing illustrations of people kind of mixed in, almost like a, a double exposure thing, you know, like where there's like uh, an image of like a building or a sunset or something in the head of somebody, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. So it's kind of like that, more illustrative, not photo photographic base. So I'm doing that now. I have to do like nine of those, and they're going to use it for an ad campaign. So that's something that came out out of nowhere. It was an opportunity that got kind of introduced to me from doing a bunch of art in Sandusky, Ohio. You know, that's kind of like that came up from that. But, yeah, it is tough to to organize so i'm like all right this week i'm just going to be working on that you know for the next couple of days trying to 
see where I'm at and, and like how much, how many more days am I going to need to to get that done? Because sometimes you don't know like how long it's going to take you. Like, and that's and it's hard to tell a client like, I'll have it for you in a couple weeks. And you don't know how long it's actually going to take you. Mm-hmm. But luckily, I haven't run, run into too many problems. But it's some days I'll be working on a mural. The next day I'll be doing something digital and the next day I'll be doing a painting. So I, I do feel flustered a lot, you know, like it is, uh, it can be a lot of anxiety uh, of just trying to organize all your thoughts like that. You know, mm-hmm. at night I'm trying to fall asleep. I'm just like, yeah, yeah. You're going to have to do tomorrow. And I'm like, you know, and I just like, you know what? I can't, I'm going to go downstairs and start painting. Like that's, yeah. But it does help writing it down. Okay. What about um, our, I'm wondering about how you are with free time. Cause it sounds like I, I can relate to you for sure about the thing you just said about like when you lay down and your head is just kind of still spinning and also just jumping around on different projects. Um, I have a tendency to overwork or like not schedule in free time or relaxed time. How are you with that? Yeah, I'm notorious for that as well. Like, if it's relaxation time, it's also me drawing on my iPad, working while hanging out with my wife sometimes. Um, trying to, I, I feel like I've been doing better about that. Um, and then also, too, like, I've, I've picked up playing golf again. Oh. So I'm like, all right, so then my downtime, I'm able to, like, concentrate on something different than art and have something else kind of excite me again because it's usually anything it's just all art it's just whether it's a different type of painting or i'm doing gouache this week or i'm you know it's like it's nice to have a an outlet where it's not art related and physical i mean that's that's right exactly it's weird because like i have this thing where i i like being in the gym and i like being physical and running and stuff but like getting myself out of creating artwork or out of like organizing what I'm going to be doing with, with this particular creative project, that part is difficult to, to do that. But I, I'm, I'm, I have so much energy, like I need to, to do that. So it's cool that you have the golf thing. At least you're like getting out and doing them. Yeah. Trying to. So, um, maybe we can have a look around your studio. Do you want to show us some stuff? Yeah, we'll maybe just do that for a few minutes, and then um, yeah. we have a couple of uh, we have a couple of critiques, some artwork that. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. All right, let's bring it out here. All right, so this is sweet too, because so you don't know, this is a basement studio um, in my house. So basically, just the, the lower floor we've converted into my studio. Nice. Uh, this is a sweet easel a wall easel that oh. my dad made like my dad's incredible um like look look at it like moves ah way. cool so you, if i have a bigger piece or i need to put them together and then um i just i'm i'm super excited about this easel so Ooh. wow yeah that's nice any size you want um so that's pretty dope so here is my encaustic setup i turned on my griddle right now so you can kind of see but yeah so right now it's a big griddle yeah extra large but then it's all it's i turned it on so you can see that inside there is the the encaustic medium and my pigment so uh-huh. it's all it's all wet all ready to go right now to paint and yeah. then it, it basically dries right when it touches the wood um yeah so for people that don't know what encaustic is just look up some you know you can look up videos about it um but yeah it's a it's a fun process where you're able to like paint and with with that and then it also dries just immediately on the on the wood so i mean it's quicker than like painting it it dries quicker than acrylic um but you're able to to open it back up if you want to like use a heat gun you can melt it you can just do all there's so many different things you can do with encaustic um so why do you have all the tape on the wall back there oh (laughs) so um i i also use 
it to like mask off lines. Uh-huh. So the thing, the thing with encaustic too, it's kind of hard to get detailed um, sometimes when I'm painting. But li- recently I'm uh, trying to create really sharp edges. Oh. Uh, so let me see if there's. So you're just you know, reusing a lot of the tape. Yeah, that's yeah. That's there, basically, I'll I'll have this up up here just like mm-hmm. that, and then it'll. If I need a sharp line or something, I'll just grab one of these pieces of tape right there. I see. Yeah. So I, I reuse them. Sometimes I make interesting shapes. Um, if I'm trying to like create like triangles or really interesting angles or pixelated it, kind of thing. And this, uh, what's this breed you have right behind you? This. Oh, that's a, a Bernese Mountain Dog. Yeah, so this is a sample of your finished stuff. Yeah, that's a sample of the finished one. Um, you don't have anybody's one. face on that dartboard. No, no, not today. No? I had Joe Blooms up there last week. <laughs> I was kidding. Um, An easy so, target with those big, huge gums. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But here's kind of like my, oh, my acrylic wash setup area. Is a piece that's kind of like in progress that this is more of a, a tighter kind of painting i'm working on oh that reminds me of an artist um, another mural artist that i that i've read about an art history class but i can't think of his name right now where he like does those double images where it's like kind of one thing goes into another thing okay yeah that um, caricature behind you is hilarious by the way this one yeah <laughs> that's, that's uh funny. If anyone, everyone knows, uh, Kev, uh, Kev Jackson's one of my best friends. He actually, so my, my birthday was a couple of days ago and he just came up to visit me for my birthday. So that was pretty yeah. neat. Yeah. That's a cool piece. Who, who painted that? Uh, uh, it's, I think it's Takao. Um, the ja- he, Japanese yeah. guy. Yep. Mm-hmm. You got a Steven Silver Game of Thrones going on there. Oh yeah. yeah I got two uh, two of his pieces up in my flat, two of his like series pieces like that. Yeah, I have a I think it's Stranger Things one. And he's then, got uh, a oh I gotta get that one, yeah. It's dope. And he he did a drawing of me at the last convention too, which was pretty cool. You got it up? No, it's upstairs. Oh, okay. It's just like a little sketch. And there's a there's a Kev Kev Jackson one of me. Oh, with the, oh man, that's that's a good idea. Wow, that's with the bees. With wow, the that's really, really creative. I don't know where you get that from. My <laughs> says that to me. <laughs> I think you got Cooney. Cooney. Yeah, I know. Isn't that nice? I love that one. Yeah. And then, and then this is from the the show that we had here in Cleveland. Uh, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. That was awesome that they organized that. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, I. I Originally had the show there at that gallery, and then we talked about doing the the uh, caricature show. It was completely different, and we're, they liked the idea of it, so we, we were able to, to get a, a lot of people on board for it, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, then here, I'll show you. This is my uh, this is where I keep all my stuff. Nice. <laughs> Just like hundreds and hundreds of pieces. Finish, not finish, incomplete. Um, wow. Recent stuff. This is some stuff I'm working on right now. That's this nice. This is actually a door that's been cut down. So like, oh, you can buy, at like Home Depot, you can you can like take, you can buy like blank doors and then uh-huh. just cut them down, and they're like I don't know like twenty thirty bucks or something for like a door, and they make really nice panels. To, to paint on and it's cheaper and less uh time consuming yeah i'll just do, do it this way man that, is that a boy in a forest is that a commission no this is this is just uh some personal work that's pretty awesome yeah yeah sometimes i'll so i've been kind of doing these double image things and and uh a lot of times like like this for me like it's a the deer up here was originally a different image. Like I, I had this whole idea for a painting and then now, then I started over and just painted on top of it while keeping some of the, the things already in it. Um, so I, I've been trying to, trying to do that to go back into old work and, uh-huh. and uh, kind of reimagine new scenarios. And I don't, it's, it's, it's like a, it's like playtime, you know, I, I just really get to like 
create really interesting, fun, playful images. This is a piece I'm working on. That's my grandpa in my, uh, that's a Batman tent I used to have. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm kind of reimagining some interesting, uh, I don't know, just, just something that lately I've been kind of being called to is creating these collage images that are just really like playful and uh kind of light yeah those are nice man thanks dude yeah your lighting is really good and yeah the, the quality of those is really cool i've yeah i've when i first saw your work i was I, it definitely got me interested in encaustic i just um mm. this this whole setup you have with like the exhaust and all that i don't know oh if yeah I'll right yeah I, i'll show that. show that a little bit more too yeah, so that's like uh, the hood. It, yeah. sucks, it sucks all the fumes out, basically. Um, so I'm not breathing all that stuff in. Um, and and then, then where does it just push them out the window? Yeah, it just pushes outside. Um, so is there anything else you want to show us in the studio, or can we look at the uh, the artwork? Yeah, we can look at yeah we can look at the artwork. Um, I think uh, that's basically all I. I do have one um, recent piece that I don't know if people know how big it is because I posted about it before, but um, here, let me grab it. It's a big uh, floral dog piece. Whoa, that's awesome. Yeah, so this one was actually in a, a one like best in show in a, uh, a jury show like around here. Oh, man, you could really <laughs> chew on that. Like the... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, that's got some deep texture. Thanks, man. Yeah, that one's all done in encaustic. And too, you can see the there's some text here and there, because that's what I can do with the transfers. Oh, nice. The encaustic transfers. So from far away, you don't notice it. But when you get up close, you can see, like, the newspaper print stuff that I do sometimes. But Are you – how do you – you're transferring that with wax or xylene, or what are you using? No, it's, it's, it's wax. Yeah, it's, okay. it's just the, – the encaustic's just able to do that. Mm. Um, so yeah, you can take like, uh, I take old image, like newspaper clippings and then, um, you heat up the wax first a little bit, just so it's tacky, not like full on melting it because it won't transfer then, you know, mm -hmm. ruin your, ruin everything you did. Uh, so you just melt it enough just with the heat gun to get it tacky. And then you put the image on top of it, take a burnishing tool, rub the back of it, like a spoon you can use. And then you take a damp cloth and you just wipe away all the paper and then the ink just stays onto the, the encaustic. It's pretty nice. Nice. Pretty cool. Pretty fun. Yeah. I actually wanted to just hit real quick before we go into the artwork. I wanted to hit real quick on the, uh, the topic of uh, free time and stuff. There's this kind of cult of um, productivity and um that's the one point that I that I forgot to make on that, which is like, it's almost like, I don't know if it's just a Western thing or just like a modern kind of like digital age thing. But there's this yeah. thing where like, when I'm relaxing, I almost feel like I'm wasting my time. Like, if I'm relaxing, I got to be drawing, you know, or if I'm on the tram, I got to be like studying check or you know what I mean? Like, there's oh, I always got to be doing something. And I think that that really um, that, that burns you out and, and it really doesn't allow your mind time to like work on it itself, you know, like, because there's a thing about sleep or a thing about meditation where your mind kind of automatically works things out and solves problems for you. Like if you just disengage from it. Okay. Um, yeah. So I don't know if you experienced that same thing, but man, I'm like that too. It's like, I sit down and I feel this kind of like nagging voice like you should be drawing oh yeah oh all the time man i i completely agree with that when i'm not doing when i'm not working in the studio i'm thinking about working in the studio <laughs> yeah yeah you know, i should be doing that or i need to get that deadline so that's the thing is certain deadlines you're just like you feel like you have to there's no time to to really you know relax so yeah, I'm I'm definitely notorious for doing that, um, but that's, that's it's hard too. I mean, especially as a an artist making you're making your income from it, 
you're, you're trying to you're trying to find the next thing so you have an extra job you know what i mean so that's part of that too you want to constantly be pushing yourself in that way so that you're 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 making a living from it you know mm -hmm. yeah you don't want to fall fall behind someone else is going to grab another artist is going to grab that job if i don't apply for it you know what i mean like yeah so you want to be the one that that gets the job um then that comes with a lot of constant work but mm. I, I do get the uh you do need to have that kind of balance for you to to relax and 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 I, i've been doing decent with that usually usually when my wife gets home from work which today's her first day back to work they finally go she's going back to work today we've been in quarantine for months now so uh but i usually during the work day is when i work and then when she gets home that's when we get to hang out um and that typically was working pretty good for a while but since we've been home all the time it's kind of harder to do that and i'm just kind of working whenever you know mm -hmm. so why don't we start by looking at uh darren kennedy okay he's got a digital piece yeah yeah Okay, cool. He said, he said he didn't have any specific question about it. Um, he just wanted to get like a kind of an overview, I guess, of it. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's so kind of a weird to... picture. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting reference photo. <laughs> um, what but... is he looking at? What I want to know what website, Darren, you're looking at, man, because yeah. you're gonna you get yourself in trouble, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly concerning. Um, I think the the overall composition is really good. I really like the the angles that are happening, like the hips, and just like how the angular you're constantly moving your eye around, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that's pretty cool. Um, I will say, like when you squint your eyes at it, you're like the darkest thing happening is the jeans down there. I yeah. kind of would like there to be a little more. I think depth in the hair by her neck. Um, yeah. Where, where, where that, there's that nice, there could be a couple more layers of hair. Maybe I think that would be good. More and right like under that. the, right under the left breast, like where the shirt meets the skin, it gets really dark right there too. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. I'm thinking like in that area, maybe even, slendering or looking at the reference and you don't always have to look at the reference to but i'm thinking that even the, the neck could curve a little bit more towards the top um instead of that sh straight line um yeah in, in that area right in that shadow could be a little bit darker um i think the hair in general could use some more work i think there's some fun things happening like starting um, and then in the top where the, the hair is kind of parting from each other, I think that could use a little more, uh, a little more crisscross in the, right, right in the center there. Mm -hmm. so that's like oh yeah. Thing. Um, I mean, over, yeah, overall, it's really, really nice. I like how the, the pink kind of shows through in some of the shirt and in the skin and it's in the background and the blue's nice. Maybe even uh, more mascara, a little, little more with the eyes or something. The eyelashes could be a little more bold, not so perfectly spaced. Yeah, I think for me, the, the main structural thing about it, like I agree with all that you, that you said, but there's something like really heavy about the neck. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know what, uh, somehow that bothers my eye. Yeah, a so, I mean, I, I like the... the I think the length is kind of funny um but yeah i do think like maybe slendering it up a little bit in, in, instead of one like tube almost looks like one long tube right now so yeah. maybe it, it gets, sausage cause, neck because in the yeah because in the in the picture it, it goes like this the, the reference so uh -huh. I, I think if you play that up a little bit and then also just work in work in the hair area create some more layers and uh create a little more depth in there kind yeah. of what kind of what's happening in the 
the shadows that are happening up by her um, top forehead. There's there's some things happening where the where the hair and the skin meet. Um, do some more like that that kind of darkness down into the the hair. That'd be nice. Yeah. yeah. It's a good expression. I like the expression. Yeah. Yeah, good composition, good. The eyes are moving you over, you know, they're kind of able to bring you around a bit. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah, good. to me, I think it is it is just the, the structure of the neck, like the shape of it. It, it looks like, like a, there's no structure in it. And also, like, when you line up the neck, like, optically, it kind of, like, if you were to take the hair off, it feels like the neck would almost touch that shoulder, like the this, top of that yeah, shoulder. Or, yeah, right. It's like a, it should be moved over a little bit or like you said, like curved or something. Yeah, yeah, I see that too. Cool. Yeah. So we got also uh, Lars Eric Rob Robinson. Yeah, Lars. He's doing some cool stuff now. Yeah, man. I've, I've been really impressed with a lot of his work lately. There's so, um, There's some good gems in there too. I'm going to play the question that he sent me. Hey Sam, hey Derek, Brennan. Um, just wanted to see if you could possibly talk about how you were doing your process with the encaustic painting that you were doing, the wax based paint. Uh, I remember you had a whole bunch of tins and you had different paint and you had to heat them up and everything. It was really interesting. I would love to try it. And where do you actually purchase uh, the paints and, and get those? So. That's, uh, you probably told me at the convention, but of course I forgot right now. Uh, I'd love to try to actually paint like that and see how it would look, and uh, I think it would be pretty exciting. So I've always loved your work. You're doing a lot of murals. I, I, you know, of course I follow you with your stuff, and it's great. Um, I am going to go ahead and submit a painting that I did recently that was kind of trippy and fun to paint, and I'm going to have it in the show. And I uh, was wondering if there's a way that you think that... Um, I could try to maybe make it even more trippier than it is or different and see how I could push it. Okay. So in a way, it's, it's a painting that I did for another podcast that we, that we all know, Jason podcast. But uh, in a way, I love what you got going on, Sam. You know, I uh, support you and I love that I Face the Truth podcast and I, have, I drink my coffee in your cup every day, every morning. So, all right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Lars. Lars is the only one, by the way. Audience, hello, audience, are you listening? Lars is the only one that bought a coffee cup from me. So uh, back it up, y'all. Back it up. Oh, yeah, what's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we talked about the encaustic a little bit already, I think, in the in this video. But um, I will say that the the tins that I have, um, you know, you can buy these tins on Amazon. Um, you can use like old cat food tins, um, <laughs> clean them out. Um, but but yeah, buy your your beeswax on um, Amazon. You can get your Damar resin, which is what you mix with beeswax to make encaustic. Um, I I could go into a lot about like the whole process of encaustic, but for just like your kit that you would need, probably you would well you first would need a griddle. You can get like a a small little grill for 10 15 bucks at walmart um tins and then oil paint like any any oil paint you mix it with the beeswax and damar resin and that's how you create your your colors your palette basically so that's just how i make all of my colors back here um is with the oil paint and beeswax so that's kind of how to start and then you can get a heat gun too a heat gun you'll need that um to to mend your layers together because uh after doing a couple layers of encaustic paint you want to you want to heat them up so that the layers don't flake off over time so by, by heating it up but not melting it you're able to to compress those together um yeah basically to, to prevent it from falling apart long term nice yeah, and you have some videos too, right? Like you have some video tutorials and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a couple, and if you look on my, I think I, I went live a few times um, a couple months ago, probably right at the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, I started doing some some pet uh, videos, so I probably those. Well, 
I, maybe I don't have them anymore. <laughs> well, my, my Facebook got hacked and I lost my old Facebook. Oh shit. Yeah. So, uh, well, if yeah. you want, we can, we can do something together and I can publish it on my channel or, you know, if you can put it yeah. on your channel or whatever, do you, sure. you have your own channel, your own YouTube I don't channel? Have a YouTube channel. I, I, you can I'm put it on mine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, if I find those videos or whatever, or also on my Instagram, you can find there's some, there's a little more tutorials, um, at least like screenshots of like images and process. You can kind of see at least how I use encaustic, mm -hmm. which, which is completely different for how a lot of encaustic aren't, isn't even figurative. It's really abstract. Um, but you picking up, um, you know, a book on encaustic or a book or, a, or watching some YouTube videos on encaustic, you'll be able, be able to, to figure it out, at least a starting spot. Would you ever do a workshop? Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, cool. I've done one. Um, I mean, I, I've done a couple workshops before. Um, it's fun. It's fun. So um, let's, I think actually Lars work would be great for, encaustic just looking at this piece that he has now can we let's let's talk about that one yeah yeah so like i, I think you're right too because his his work's got this sketchy like there's a lot of energy in his work a lot of movement so i think uh bringing in encaustic could actually you know really work with his style um so I just want to say something about the trippy question because like uh -huh. he's got a good it's got a good vibe to it already like when when I saw the image at first I didn't see the reference photos at first but I thought right away like wow that's trippy like it looks like the guy just ate a bunch of mushrooms or something Yeah but, um, but I think that one of the things for me anyway that it makes something like more trippy is kind of like some mystery in the background um, and usually that can be accomplished with like uh, areas of darkness that don't resolve themselves and kind of uh, you sort of your mind sort of has to fill them in. And then another way uh, to make things kind of trippy is uh, the way that the lighting like uh, things with like some under lighting, like some like green or blue, blue or purple kind of under lighting can create some kind of mystery and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I got to say on the trippy part. Yeah, I think that that's that's a good point. Um, yeah, I'm thinking darkening it up a little bit. Yeah, like you're saying, will definitely help with that. Like almost like all those things are in like like space, like all the the mushrooms and, and eyes and stuff. So it's like more dark in the background, um, and these things are kind of coming out of them. Also, color would create more of like a trippy, like weird colors. Because right now, um, I'm thinking the colors can be a little, they're a little brown, a little muddy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm thinking, like, in the bottom left corner, I'm seeing that, that there's, like, a pink and green thing happening mm -hmm. with the eye. Bringing some more of that around there, making it, if you're really going for, like, a psychedelic, like, go for it. Like, and, like, amp it up, you know, do a lot of that, that kind of lay like overlay colors over stuff make it real right colorful. above the right above the hat too he's got some like uh yellow and orange yeah, yeah i'm saying more more of that if, if that's what he's going for yeah Oof, i really love that like that hidden kind of color just coming through that brown like i want to see not maybe not too much of that but a little bit more and I, I don't know, there's just something so, like, visually crispy about that. Like, I really like that. I, I really like the, the bottom, like, mid-left corner with the eyes. Like, that the whole behind the arm area where I think, the, like, the eyes, like, coming out or, like, behind the shoulder. That's really uh -huh. nice. Yeah, I, I feel like on the, on the other side, I'm not sure, like, because there's some, there's some, like, light blue happening around the ear. I think that it's that's coming forward too much. I think he needs to be pushing stuff back further. So I think darkening up that side is going to make the the character pop out better in front yeah. of like everything. Cause yeah, it's a little the, flat in the background. The foreground, mid-ground is all kind of together, especially on that, that edge, which in that edge is supposed to pop forward, you know? 
So another thing with the lighting too, that, uh, you know, this is a, I guess it's kind of a stylistic choice, but, um, a lot of the lighting is sort of like, there's not a dark area right next to a light area. And that can, that can really help things pop out a lot more. Um, and just a, also a comment back on the, the last piece that we looked at, you know, we, we talked about it kind of in a, a roundabout way, but I see artwork a lot, um, not just with these critiques, but like on the streets of Prague or whatever, and my friend's artwork that um, they're missing the idea or they're, they're not fully understanding like what you can do with the tonality and then the fact that like the tonality is really what gives something like a uh, depth and kind of like structure. Mm -hmm. um, obviously there's, you know, you're, you're drawing the framework of the piece or whatever, but like when you're, when you're going in and laying in the, the colors and stuff, I think people kind of forget the importance of that. Yeah. It's just the one simple consideration that can really like improve the piece, you know? Yeah, for sure. I, I get that. And like, like a lot of times when I start a painting, you know, I'll do like a whole under coat of red just over the whole, the whole thing. And then even when I paint over top of it, little parts of the red will still come through and it just helps bring everything together and feel cohesive and not mm -hmm. like separated, you know, it's mm -hmm. another way. And then you, you're also able to find a good mid tone, you know, have a mid tone red or whatever your color that you want to have underneath your painting it'll usually the opposite of what the painting is doing to make it vibrate, move around. That's usually what I, my goal is for like colors to almost jump out at you. So they vibrate against each other. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, that's, I think that. My cool. only last thing about the, um, about Lars piece is um, the glasses can like, it almost seems like the glass the frame that should be smaller is a little bit bigger and vice versa. So like the, the frames where he's getting that blue light on the left side should actually be, you know, it's like the glasses are flat on the page. They're not really in the dimensional. Yeah. They're not correct dimensionally. Yeah. 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 That, that would help me bring it out a little bit more, give it more dimension. Yeah. I see that. Yeah. Almost like, you can see like this edge coming out like out here this way and then yeah. you see the, the side of the glass jutting out at, like instead of it flattening out there the the edge is like up by the hat closer you know almost coming out at you i can see that too yeah yeah it's so. a cool one piece though yeah yeah he's he's really got something going like a unique thing going with that style so is there anything that you want to plug? Um, well, let's see. Lately, have been working on the books. So I think Little Legacy um, is the, it's like the, I think the Instagram handle for the, the books that Ke Kev Jackson and I are working on. Oh, okay. cool. Yeah, so, so Kev, Kev Jackson, oh, also I want to plug him too. Uh, so Kev is also, he's doing the characters for the books, and I'm doing the environments and all the background stuff. Nice. So, um, I mean, that kind of works. I mean, if you, don't, if you know Kev Jackson's style, it's perfect for a children's book. Um, and he works at Carter's Clothing right now uh, for doing children's clothes. So I was like, we got to have him working on the project. Um, it's definitely his strength and my strength finally getting to work together on something. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, yeah, just my, my Instagram is uh, Derek underscore T underscore Brennan. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, the bummer, about bummer about, um, man, Eurocature just got canceled too. So what a bummer, man. Man, Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be weird without the con this year. Um, always always looking forward to it because it's like yeah it's like the super bowl for for us caricature artists <laughs> yeah yeah and it, and it's and it's for for so many of it, it's the one it's the one time we see each other so and that's taken away we're like cool but i don't know 
next year will just even be better. You know, I think I think we'll really have like a good turnout for the following year. Hopefully, as long as everything's good. Yeah. Uh, I think people will be want really into it. You know. Cool. Well, thanks for your time, man. It's good talking to you again. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep up with your Instagram page and stuff and make make some comments. And Well, man, I appreciate you having me. This is a lot of fun. I'm glad to talk about some studio stuff with, you know, with anyone now. It's like it's, it's so hard to, to get. Uh, usually I have people in here a lot, you know, checking out work or going through, you know, my, my process. So it's been kind of hard to do that lately. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm really happy to, to be able to share a little bit of what, what day in my life is like. Uh, but yeah, it's been fun, man. Uh, all right. All right. Say bye.